Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh. In this video, I will be talking about reading for understanding and writing to communicate. Why would a science teacher, such as myself, talk about literacy, or in other words, reading and writing? What in the heckins does reading and writing have to do with science? Well, it turns out that it has everything to do with science. Okay, maybe not everything. There's a lot of other parts of science. But reading and writing are super de duper important when it comes to being a good scientist. In fact, it goes without saying that reading and writing really are foundational to all parts of education and careers and life in general. If you want to be successful, you really do need to be good at reading and writing. And so we do a lot of reading and a lot of writing in science. And so as an example, if you are a scientist and you make a new discovery, how are you going to communicate that discovery to all the other human scientists or other kinds of scientists, dog scientists, giraffe scientists, whatever, how are you going to communicate your discovery to all the other scientists so that they can know what you have discovered and how amazing you are? Because if you don't, then what's going to happen? That discovery is going to die with you. When you die, you'll take your knowledge with you and no one else will know. So you have to publish your discoveries. You have to publish your findings. And you do that through writing, typically. I mean, you might give some lectures as well, but the primary way that you publish your findings is in journals where you write them out and you say, this is what I learned, fellow human scientists, and be amazed by it. You contribute to the knowledge of humans. Science is about uh, expanding the knowledge of people and discoveries aren't just for us to be, you know, they're not just secrets that we keep, we share them. Uh, what about reading? Well, when you are doing research, when you are, science starts with a question, it starts with a problem. You're like, hmm, I wonder, I wonder how this thing works, or I wonder why this phenomena occurs. Then the first thing you do, because you are not the only scientist in the world, there are thousands of them, tens of thousands, and it's very likely that somebody else has had the same question as you. And it's very likely that they've already done some research or some experimenting. And maybe even they've already solved the problem or at least part of the problem. And so before you start your own experiments, you are gonna go and research what other scientists have done. You've probably done this already. I mean, how often have you had a question like, hmm, why pray tell? is, I don't know, whatever. And why are there worms on the sidewalk when it rains? Or whatever your particular question is. And then you go on to, what do you do? You go on to Google, right? You Google the question and you're like, oh, look, here's the answer. Well, scientists do the same thing. So when you do research as a scientist, you're gonna be doing a lot of reading. So scientists both read so that they can obtain information. They read to understand and they write to communicate. What does it mean though to read to understand? I'm sure you can, uh, you've had this experience that I've had. You, you can relate to this. So have you ever been reading something? Maybe you were assigned a textbook 
assignment or an article or something that you had to read. And you sat down in your comfy chair with your hot cocoa. Okay, maybe not with hot cocoa. And maybe your chair wasn't very comfortable. I mean, if you're at school, those chairs are terrible. But you sat down somewhere and you began to read and you read and you read and you read and you read every word and every sentence. And then you get to the end of the thing and you're like, wait a minute, wait just a minute. What did I just read? Because you read every single word, but you get to the end and none of it is in your head. It all leaked out your ears. You do know what earwax is, right? Earwax is the words you read leaking out of your ears, or at least that's my theory. Uh, that may not be scientifically true, though. But you read every word, and then you get to the end of the thing, you're like, I don't know what I read. So that when we read to understand, we have to hold ourselves accountable for what we are reading. We have to force our brains to pay attention and make sure that we understand. And there's a lot of uh, skills, a lot of techniques you can use when you are reading for understanding. And one of them that I like is to ask myself at the end of every sentence or maybe every other sentence, maybe every sentence is a little bit excessive, but ask myself regularly, am I still paying attention? Or has my mind wandered? Just hold yourself accountable. At the end of every paragraph, say, okay, self, what is in this paragraph? What, what is the knowledge that is trying to be impartified, imparterated, or those are not words, imparted, into my head? And if you don't know, then you need to go back and read the last couple sentences or the last paragraph again. Reread it until the knowledge is in your mind. It, and then when you get to the end of the article or whatever it is you're reading, you say to yourself, okay, what does this article say? Do I completely, totally, and utterly understand it? Or did my mind wander because I was thinking about my secret crush or something? I was thinking about something way more interesting, and I didn't get any of this. Okay, so the first skill technique is to hold yourself accountable not a cannibal, that would be a bad thing, but hold yourself accountable. Another technique is to look up vocabulary words. So as you're reading along and you come across a word you don't know, you can look it up. That's what dictionaries, they, they invented these things called dictionaries and they have words in them and they're in alphabetical order and you can look up definitions. It's a great way to expand your vocabulary, by the way. I do this all the time. I speak Spanish, hablo español, lo he hecho por más que 20 años, 25 años. I've spoke Spanish for 25-ish years, more than that, 26, I think, right now. Anyway, and I read every night in Spanish. I read novels in Spanish because I want to improve my Spanish. And even after 26 years, I still come across words I don't know. And so I'll look them up. And then I know those words. And then I have more, a bigger vocabulary in my wee little brain. Okay. So there are lots of strategies you can use for reading for understanding. Uh, and those are just a couple of them. Let's talk now about the other half of this. Writing to communicate. Reading and writing are two very different skills. You can be a great reader and struggle as a writer or vice versa. You can be a great writer, but struggle as a reader. So you have to work on both of them. What does it mean to write to communicate? Writing to communicate is when we break something down in very simple terms so that others can understand our goal, our objective, is to take the information in our brains and barf it out onto the page so that everybody else will understand it. The more clear and precise you can write, the easier it will be for others to understand. So we're not writing for a grade. We're not writing just to get this assignment behind us and be like, oh, I wrote a sentence. My teacher said I had to write three sentences and I wrote three sentences and they might not make any sense, but they're there, so I'm done, okay? We're not writing for a grade. We're writing for other people to read it 
so that they will understand. One strategy that I like to use when I'm attempting to write to communicate is to pretend that I am writing to somebody who is younger than me. Now, I'm very old, so there's lots of people younger than me. But if you are writing to communicate, you can do the same thing. Imagine that you are writing to a younger sibling or a younger cousin or somebody in the neighborhood who's younger than you. And imagine that they don't know anything about the topic. So you're, and they're not going to read any of the articles you've read or do any of the research you've done. So you, when your writing is going to have to be very clear and instructive so that they will understand. So for example, let's suppose a rate, let's suppose, suppose if I, suppose in a rate, let's suppose that you are writing about cells and the various parts, the various organelles of cells. You would need to imagine that the person you are writing to, the person who's going to read your writing is younger than you. Maybe they are your 10 year old cousin, or if you are 10, then they're your eight year old cousin, or if you are eight, then you know what I mean, they're your six year old cousin, whatever. And they don't know anything about cells. So you need to start from the beginning. You need to think through your writing and plan what you're going to write so that they will understand. You can't just be random and uh, describe things randomly. You have to have a plan. So maybe you start with a definition of cells. And then you write about the various parts of cells. And then you can have a little conclusion at the end. These are the parts of the cell. Uh, every part of the cell you describe, you need to be detailed because your little cousin isn't going to know anything about that each of those parts, or at least you want to assume that they don't. Okay. When we write to a, a teacher or somebody who is older than us, we tend to leave out a lot of important details because we assume that they already know. And we're like, I just got to say an answer and get my grade. And then we don't write very well. But when we write to communicate, we need to write in a way that so that other people can read it and learn the knowledge that we want to share with them. When we read to understand, we need to have the same perspective. We need to remember the person who wrote was writing to communicate. And so our job when we're the reader is to understand. And we need to be present and force ourselves to pay attention. And vice versa, when we write to communicate, we need to assume that the reader is going to try to understand. They're going to do their part. When we're the writer, our job is to be clear and precise in what we are sharing. Every mastery badge that we do on HandsomeScienceTeacher.com has a literacy assignment. And in that literacy assignment, you will read... For understanding, there is an article assigned, and you will then write to communicate. So take your time, take pride in your work and in what you are doing. Make your hold yourself accountable, not for a grade, but out of pride, out of wanting to do a good job. Okay, you are capable of reading to understand, and you are capable of being a good writer. You are capable of writing to communicate. And then this skill will carry on in other aspects of your life and you will be generally speaking a much more successful person. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. 
So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science students. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted. And those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.